clouds in the coffee, clouds in the coffee, Steve Elliott. We've all been asked the same question, maybe in a job interview, maybe at a networking event, or maybe even at a Toastmasters meeting. But I'm Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. The question is, who is your favorite leader? And sometimes, you can kind of stumble around in there as to who it is. We hear Steve Jobs' name mentioned. We'll hear Nelson Mandela. We may even hear Barack Obama. We rarely hear President Trump, but that's another story. I was thinking about the leaders that I've been blessed to work for, whether they were my immediate supervisor or whether they were somebody higher up the food chain. And I sat on my balcony looking at the clouds in my coffee, trying to figure out who is this leader that I admire the most. And because maybe I was looking at coffee, one name sprang to mind for me, Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz is the former CEO of Starbucks and is currently attempting to run for U.S. President through the Democratic Party. And when I thought about Howard, I could talk about him for hours because he's done so much great work. But there were three traits that came immediately to mind, and they were curiosity, visionary, and compassion. Now when I talk about curiosity, Howard has a thirst for knowledge. He was a high-ranking executive in a New York kitchenware's company. And as he was poring over his weekly reports, he happened to see that a company called Starbucks was selling more percolators than even his key accounts. Now for most New York executives, they're just going to have a curiosity and that would be it. But Howard had a wonderlust and he wanted to travel to that company and find out what this Starbucks was all about. When he landed in Seattle, he was greeted by the three co-owners, and they promptly took them to their one location in Seattle. And it didn't even sell coffee you could drink. All they sold were the beans to make the coffee and the equipment to brew it. They showed him how they roasted the beans, and they talked about the whole magical world of coffee, and Howard was hooked. He quit his job in New York and went to join this fledgling company in Seattle. That, to me, <coughs> demonstrates a thirst for curiosity. Without that plane ride to Seattle and looking into what that Starbucks company was doing, I doubt we'd have a siren on every corner. And that brings me to my next point, the visionary aspect of Howard Schultz. They, were, the co-owners of Starbucks, were sending Howard out on business trips around the world to learn more about coffee. And it was when he went to Italy that he came to see the coffee houses. And there were the baristas working their wizardry into cups. There was noise and chatter. Families were gathering around the table. Old friends were meeting. And Howard immediately saw that there was nothing like this in America. And he had a vision. So he flies back to Seattle, <coughs> creates a wonderful presentation delivered with passion and with grace and gusto. And the three corners of Starbucks say, we're not interested in that. We just sell beans, Howard. We're not going to have lattes and cappuccinos and coffee being brewed in our stores. We are about the bean. What does Howard do? He quits Starbucks. And he creates his own company of coffee houses called Il Gornale. 
hope there's no Italians in the audience. I may have butchered that. <laughs> a series of coffee houses in Seattle. Now, who does Howard get to supply him the beans? Starbucks, of course. <laughs> and so the coffee houses do amazing business. And while this is transpiring, the three co-owners of Starbucks are now at each other's throats, and they want out. So Howard scoops them up, buys them out, and takes over the brand Starbucks. And that's the vision that Howard brought to the rest of North America. The final point is probably best highlighted by the title of this book that Howard wrote, called Pour Your Heart Into It. Compassion. Howard was a leader like no other. For when he was a teenager, living in the Bronx, New York, in very modest surroundings, his father broke his leg as a delivery truck driver and couldn't work for the weeks that his leg was in a cast. He saw his father wither on the couch. His male ego had been punctured. His kids and his wife were having to go out to make a living so that they could survive. And Howard vowed if he ever got into a leadership position, he would lead differently. He didn't want anyone to experience what his family experienced. So when he took over Starbucks and became the CEO, one of the very first acts he did was he got health care coverage, not just for the full-time employees, but all employees, even part-time baristas in the stores. That was a landmark move in the U.S. labor market, and we all know that the U.S. health care system is different, so it was a huge burden to provide that coverage to the employees. The funniest story I can share with you about Howard's compassion, after he had done the health care, he started to think, what could I do more to help the, all the people of the company? And so he decided, we're going to have stock options for everybody in this company. And the accountants came to Howard and said, Howard, we're not publicly traded. We don't have stock. How are you going to execute this? And Howard said, ah, I leave you to figure out the details. We're going to have stock options. Well, the accounting department created a stock option plan. And so Starbucks became the first privately held company to ever offer stock options, again, to all its employees, not just the full-timers. I hope tonight's sip of Howard's leadership has caused you to maybe dive deeper. And if so, I would hardly recommend this book, Pour Your Heart Into It, or its successful sequel, Onward. Howard was a great leader who had curiosity, vision, and compassion. And those three things continue to leave a footprint and a reverberation on the North American market to this day. Madame Toast, please.